freedom of peaceful demonstrations and allowing full and unhindered access for Arab institutions and Arab and international media. And yet, as we have seen, the Assad regime has chosen to do just the opposite, turning its heavy weaponry on its own citizens and shelling its own cities and towns. At present, we cannot know all the exact details of what has occurred. The Assad regime has chosen to keep observers away, whether they are from the Arab League, international human rights monitors, or the international press. But in broad strokes, the reality is completely clear, and it is appalling. We know enough. We know that more than 6,000 Syrians have been killed. We know that scores of children have died. We know that Syrians are being tortured by their own government. And we know also that when investigations are made and final responsibility is determined, we too will be judged as members of the United Nations. This is the context of our discussions today. Mr. President, the United States again calls on the Syrian government to respect the human rights and dignity of its people, please to cease all violence immediately. We also citizens protest peacefully and respectfully for months on end, and these protests are met by gunfire and mortar fire directed at them by their own government at a terrible cost in the lives of civilian men, women, and children, then armed opposition cannot come as a surprise. We hold the Syrian regime fully responsible for the worsening cycle of violence. Mr. President, the United States applauds the initiatives and leadership of the Arab League, and in particular, welcomes the announcement of the Friends of Syria Conference to be held on February 24th in Tunisia. We commend the Arab League for putting forth a plan calling for the regime to halt operations against defenseless civilians, facilitate a transition, and broker a political solution to this ongoing crisis. We strongly agree with the Arab League's demand yesterday to immediately and fully stop all acts of violence and the murder of civilian, civilians, and its renewed call on the Syrian armed forces to immediately lift the military siege imposed on residential districts and villages. Mr. President, we believe the international community must work together to speak with one voice in supporting these efforts. And in that regard, we commend Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for his sustained commitment to resolving the Syrian crisis. The United States has been working intensively with the international community, including in this body, the Security Council, the Human Rights Council, to address the situation in Syria. We again call on the Syrian government to permit unfettered access to the Commission of Inquiry, established by the UN Human Rights Council in August. We also call on Syrian authorities to allow full and unimpeded access for humanitarian relief personnel in order to ensure the timely delivery of humanitarian aid to vulnerable populations including, including the more than 70,000 internally displaced persons residing in Syria. Mr. President, the United States fully supports the Syrian people's demands for a unified Syria with a democratic, representative, and inclusive government that respects human rights and fundamental freedoms and provides equal protection under the law for all individuals regardless of sect, ethnicity, religion, or gender. As President Obama said on February 4th, every government has the responsibility to protect its citizens, and any government that brutalizes and massacres its people does not deserve to govern. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And now I give the...
Good afternoon. I've uh, just come out of the General Assembly Hall where I address the General Assembly at the request of the President on the current uh, human rights situation in Syria. First, let me say that I do appreciate uh, that this uh, session was conducted because it is the United Nations General Assembly that is the guardian of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we know that there is a provision in the Universal Declaration saying that it is essential if we want to stop people from taking the ultimate course of resorting to violence and rebellion, that the human rights under the rule of law be protected. Um, I gave a number of statistics today on how the situation has escalated. It has been continuing, but it has escalated since the inability of the Security Council to take concrete action here. Um, I'm still having difficulties to keep track of the number of deaths. They, are, we, they stand at 5,400, but I uh, can tell you very clearly that the number of killings have continued. I've given the figure of 400 children killed, 300 uh, people killed just over the last 10 days since the shellings and bombing started. 18,000 people in detention, and 25,000 people have fled Syria and sought refuge in neighboring states. I have also urged the um, members of the General Assembly to take seriously the views of the Commission of Inquiry and myself that in our opinion, crimes against humanity are being committed and the perpetrators must be held to account. Thank you. Been totally ignored. Mr. Aldabi was not invited to speak before the Security Council on the 31st of January, and he was on the ground speaking to an entire spectrum of people in Syria. Why has his report been ignored? Well, I can't guess why the Security Council didn't uh, let the head of the Observer Mission speak. I do know now the current situation is that the Observer Mission has been terminated and the uh, response of the League of Arab States is to call for a joint UN uh, Arab League um, peace uh, keeping mission. Whether it's observer, the previous one or now, we stand ready to assist in any way we can. Madam, um, two things please, you spoke of um, how do I again? Uh, you spoke of uh, the need to go to the ICC. And now, did you want the General Assembly to recommend that to the Security Council in order to overcome the hurdle of the Security Council blocking such action? What are the possible scenarios to overcome the hurdles in the Security Council? And secondly, in as far as the Arab League's uh, proposal of a joint body, uh, how do you propose that this happens within your own um, human rights uh, approach uh, or, you know, to, 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 to going together into Syria? To both your questions, it is the Security Council that has the power of referring a situation for investigation by the prosecutor of the ICC. And when I raised it here, I'm hoping that it would be taken up and that eventually the Security Council will act on it. Similarly, with the uh, question of uh, peacekeeping mission, whether joint or a UN peacekeeping mission, this is once again, uh, dependent on the decision of the Security Council. Just for clarity, if the General Assembly recommends to the Security Council to, you know, to take up the issue and refer it to the ICC, uh, what value would that make, rather, uh, given that the Council is blocked on this issue? I mean, is there any other way? Well, m let me emphasize that my recommendation is made on the basis of of credible evidence. I place this now before the General Assembly. Theirs would be, of course, an extremely powerful voice that should influence the Security Council to take action on accountability. He spoke after you did, to give you a chance to respond. The Syrian permanent representative 
made a much of these recent attacks that I guess either Al Qaeda is claiming credit for or has, you know, expressed opposition to the government. What, what's the what what either percentage or how would you characterize the the the, the deaths caused by opponents, including Al Qaeda, a, a compared to the numbers that you're citing caused by the government? First, let me say that uh, more reliable information will come out when the Commission of Inquiries report is delivered before the Human Rights Council in March. And I was thinking, since we are cut off from access into Syria, that we ought to get more reliable information on the uh, Al-Qaeda attacks referred to by the rep representative of Syria. Uh, the Secretary General, as issued a statement of sympathy for the people who were killed and injured in that terrorist attack. But whatever it is, my concern is that civilians are caught in, in these clashes, whether it's actions by the security forces, actions by the opposition activists, armed, uh, armed groups, or whether it's terrorist acts, it's civilians who are being caught up and losing their lives. I would say there then it's imperative that the government of Syria allows access uh, to me, to journalists from all over the world and to the Commission of Inquiry to verify uh, to what extent there are terrorist activities there. Thank you. Sorry, I waited till the end, but I wanted to ask you one other UN human rights question. The question is as follows. Uh, an individual named in Ban Ki-moon's panel of experts report on Sri Lanka as having been engaged in war crimes, Shivendra Silva, has recently been made a senior advisor on peacekeeping to the Secretary General. And I wanted to know yourself, having the report's been sent to Geneva, what do you think? Do you think this reflects well on the UN's, the place of human rights within the UN, and what would you suggest be done? I think it's a matter of concern. The United Nations has very clear policies on vetting, and this is part of the work that my office does. We keep a list of individuals who uh, are suspected of committing human rights violations, and I have addressed um, a letter of concern to the Secretary General uh, about this individual. Thank you for your questions. Thank you.